Hey guys, Alex Williamson with The Secret History, uh, living in your aquarium. And tonight we're going to take a look at what goes on in your aquarium during the dark. If you've never checked this out before, uh, I highly recommend it. Some things are a little different. Now, I've had my light on a minute here, um, just taking a look to make sure that everybody was well asleep. And in doing so, I've kind of woken some of the fish up. But what we're going to talk about tonight is mostly plants. And the potentially dangerous effects of having too many plants in the wrong water conditions. And the fact that plants actually move and respond to the night and to the light and to the water and to the temperature and also to the gases that are present in the water. So let's take a look at the tank and see what's different at night. All right, so here's my 40 gallon tank. And I hope you guys can see I'm not using a flashlight because I wanted to illuminate more of the tank and we'll see how that works here. But in the back here, you can see my uh, Kabamba plants and they look like little pine trees almost. So if you can see them in there, all right. Um, what you're seeing is they are actually closed up tight and in the day they're completely open like the lower leaves whereas these upper leaves right now if we zoom in are actually closed together and that's because of vapor exchanges and water exchanges that are going on now you'll also see fish that are moving around due to the light but different fish find different zones to sleep we have down here we've got the the corridors are sleeping uh, the tetras sleep in a group together uh, the guppies sleep towards the top and the baby fry are definitely all hiding in here the shrimp have hidden in the cracks um, so take a look at your tank and see what your critters are doing now what I mentioned earlier about plants is uh, you're going to need to understand the basic principles of how a plant uh, lives and breathes and metabolizes. So essentially, uh, in the daytime, a plant has chlorophyll in its leaves, which allow it to photosynthesize. Now, what that allows a plant to do is to take the sun's energy and convert it into uh, its own energy, into physical energy, and it, in doing so, it uses that energy plus the water. You know, plants are made of a lot of water. If you've ever chopped them up or put them in a blender, you're, you can juice just about any plant. And uh, so you've got the water and then the exchange of vapors also, which include the water, but they actually have carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, nitrogen, and uh, oxygen, of course. But in the air, um, these, these, uh, these atomic chemicals or compounds and atoms are dismantled in, in the cells of the plants and there's different cells and all plants have uh, cell walls instead of cell membranes which means that they are able to take water differently and stomata is the name of the cell groupings uh, on plant leaves so stomata open and close at night after it's done getting energy in the day and in the day when your light is on in your tank uh, all your plants are actually creating sugars and then quickly thereafter starches and they're taking the carbon out of the carbon dioxide releasing that oxygen that they don't need and then putting that into the water which then turns into it it's a gas in the water it's just really small and broken up so we don't see it or as bubbles until it gets concentrated now at night oftentimes and this can happen in the day but at the end of the night, you'll get bubbles uh, if you have any surface, uh, like this java fern here has actually kicked off uh, enough e either CO2 or oxygen 
that you can see the bubbles at the bottom. So, kind of interesting. Another thing that happens is on these stomatas, the pores on the plants, they can rearrange the plant by moving around uh, water and and uh, that air and water vapor on plants that live on land, but they in the water, they can really use that. So that's why you said that kabamba grass um, pulled up tight. It, it allows it so in the daytime it needs the most sunlight on the surface area as possible. And that stuff can grow, you know, an inch a day. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, a weed in a lot of places. And at night, it can pull together and then just worry about growing and reaching upward. And it also lets go any excess carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So it's literally pulling apart molecules down to their atomic level and then reassembling them. And at night, when it's releasing the leftover carbon uh, monoxide and dioxide, that can actually harm your fish if you have way too many plants and uh, a fish in there. That change can cause the way that the fish breathe. So maybe you don't think about fish breathing, but they actually do. They breathe oxygen just like you and I, but it's in the form of water and their gills filter out the hydrogen and they get the oxygen out of it. So another incredible process that I'm just touching on here, but in another video we'll get more into. So as you saw the carbamba uh, moving upwards with its leaves, you can also see that a lot of grasses and other plants will stand straight up at night. They'll also put out their, their uh, sideways like runner roots and moss will stretch out uh, and this is all to get the most nutrients uh, out of the water as possible while also simultaneously um, collecting the CO2 out of the water which is what your fish are expelling so they're they're using that protein and that sugar that they've created and the proteins mostly made at night and really it's 8 to 12 hours where they use the sun or photosynthesis to grow. They can't take more than that and they need to rest and they need to get rid of their waste products which are oxygen and other gases. Um, in this plant here, this wisteria, it's kind of interesting. So you can see the light side of the leaves and in the day those aren't turned up like that. And so stomata can occur on plants on either the top of a leaf or a bottom, and they flex and they release to open up. So they relax or they flex, and it's basically like, um, it's basically a hole, a pore like in our skin, where gases can come and go as well as fluids. Now, in most plants, while they're taking in sunlight, they also can take in water vapor to help grow, but they can't take in the carbon dioxide. So they have to do one or the other. In other plants, they can do both at the same time, but that's mainly in cacti and some succulents. So in aquatic plants, specifically ones that are totally aquatic, unlike this wisteria, with the wisteria, you'll see the bottom of the petals uh, or of the leaves, I'm sorry, actually turn down because the gas bubbles are coming up from down below from other plants and from the fish and just out of the ground from uh, algae and other, uh, other living organisms, bacteria and protozoa, and it's catching those and its pores are open. And because they're open, it's not concerned about the angle of the leaf for the sunlight or anything. So it's catching all of the CO2 it can get, and it's also catching, you know, uh, potassium for its nerve conductivity, and it's also catching uh, nitrogen as well as many other, um, you know, iron and other things that we need that it needs that organisms need to live. And so this wisteria at the top is actually spindly and it looks like arugula and the reason for that is because most plants and at the bottom here you can see it's 
more leafy. It's not so uh, broken up and uh, spindly and crumpled. And that's because most plants in the aquarium trade are actually grown indoors, uh, out of the water. Their root system is usually in the water or sprayed by water in high humidity. But then once they're shipped, it makes them more stable to, to be in that form, like wisteria. Now seaweed and different... Um, grasses and mosses that are underwater that that's not always the case some of them need to be underwater all the time but with pl bigger plants like this especially um they ship it and then it has to convert and so what it's doing is it's changing the way its surface area works and so it needs to focus less on that photosynthesis with with surface area on the leaves and it can work more with the gases in the water and the nutrients from the fish going to the bathroom and from the fish exhaling. And so what you're seeing is about a month and a half or a month old wisteria plant that is actually converting to its water form with the newest growth up top showing it most pronounced and the older growth either losing leaves or changing as we speak. So take a look at your plants and see what they're doing like this guy in the daytime they were all straight now they're curved every plant's different and they have those stomata complexes or stomata like apertures as they're known in different configurations some are on top of leaves some are on the bottom some can only be open during the day some during night but for the most part plants put out uh, excess co2 at night and then oxygen by the end and in the daytime they're taking in the photosynthesis uh, end of things but here you can see the roots of the plant um, against the wall here or on the side I think I've got it set yeah so it's set up the same way but it's it's just interesting to take a look around your tank and see what's different see the leaves turned up uh on all sorts of plants and in the day that's not the case and with the the sword type you know the java the java um ferns and some of the sword grass and things they're straight up and down they don't need to be bent out to catch the light so kind of interesting this is kind of the botanical end of things we're going to take a walk really quick over to the other tank and just see if anything's different but <clears throat> in this tank you can see the kabum kabumba is really closed up so that's a great example right there it is closed and even a different color and that's purple kabumba and in the daytime that'll be open up and that's where the newest growth will occur so the other thing you'll notice in this tank is that the snails have come out to play a lot of snails are nocturnal and only come out at night and because of that uh let's see here there there we go we got the kabumba lit there uh because of that you'll see different different critters at night um, I probably just stressed out and woke up these guppies, uh, but that's okay. The quarries are sleeping at the bottom, and then there's shrimp also. And in this tank, too, they're tucked away. So I would be surprised if we can even find them easily. Um, but it's also important to watch the temperature, and plants really do like a subtle temperature change. Um, you know, and so do the fish. But not most of us can do that and so we can get away with it but oop, i startled that fish um but for optimal growth you only want the lights on about 8 to 12 hours 10 probably being ideal and you actually want to add co2 to the water if you don't have a ton of fish and you can add more CO2, and when you see those aquascapes of, you know, these grandiose plants um, underwater in what looks like landscapes from, you know, an imaginary uh, fairy tale land or from medieval times or something, uh, 
those are called uh, Aquascapes, and ADA is kind of the big organization. Um, Amano being the man who's kind of uh, coined a lot of the, the terms and styles and things. But that spread over into daytime decor now, too. And even rocks and things have different patterns at night because of how the heat treats things and how calcium and other uh, minerals and iron are then released in the water because the water temperature changes and there's an inversion. So cold water sinks, hot water rises, and it stirs things up in your tank. And all that has a role in how things survive. So sorry this video was a little hard to see. Um, uh, I may try to shoot some more shots and edit them in later that have um, uh, a flashlight where we can pinpoint things, but I wanted this diffused light so it didn't totally startle the fish. A lot of times they kind of go into shock when you just shine a light right at them uh, and get spazzy and mm -hmm. stressed. But So in any case, take a look at your aquarium at night if you haven't before. I think you'll be surprised at what you see. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, keep on swimming, guys. Bye.